Okay, well, 2021. I guess yeah, the reason I thought we'd uh, get together and just sort of chat about this, I've, I've been having some discussions with builders, there's been different boards of putting about different things, banks have been putting up all kinds of different scenarios. And, and it's interesting to see that there is some common direction that they're saying, but then you're also getting other ones that are saying, well, it's gonna do that, but it's gonna do this. But if this happens and that happens and this happens, then it's gonna do something totally different. Um, so I just wanted to share my thoughts on what I see happening based on some of the discussions I've had with healthcare professionals, with politicians, with banks, and, uh, and some of the surveys I know that have gone on out there. I anticipate, this is where I'm gonna go through, and then we're gonna have a little bit of a discussion. Um, always, if you have a comment, by all means, you know, put it out there, let's chat. Are you going to start with what I see as being the main source and question of real estate is supply and demand. It's our, our marketplace is always based on supply and demand, including 2020. Um, supply and demand was very important and, and hence we saw multiple offers because of the lack of supply. And I believe that in the first half of 2021, we are still going to have limited listings. There's going to be a limited amount of supply. Now, certain pockets of you know, downtown condominiums, downtown core, uh, you know, cities where you've got you know, overpopulated listings or more listings, um, it's not going to be as brisk as the freeholds. Um, the freeholds are definitely going to be in the, in the downtown core of major cities. They're going to be limited. I'm going to explain that why. And I'm also going to touch on what I believe is going to happen to the condo market in downtown, such as Ottawa, Toronto, Vancouver, based on things that I'm hearing. Okay. But first of all, supply and demand, it's still going to remain tight for the first half of the year. So you are going to be where if you're working with buyers, you are going to be in a situation where you're going to be in multiple offers. So make sure you prep yourself. It's going to feel very similar to what we've been seeing in the last three, four months, limited supply. And this is including outside GTA. This is in areas where we are you know, outside GTA or in most of on Southern Ontario, mid Ontario are all seeing this. Okay. Everybody is seeing a short supply because we have so many people in Ontario that have been moving and we have other people that are waiting who decided not to move. And I'm going to cover off that in a little bit. Okay. But the third and fourth quarter, the third and fourth quarter of the year, uh, we're going to see more listings coming on the marketplace. And the reason is, is you're going to start having where the vaccine in the third and fourth quarter in Ontario is going to be widely available and obviously going to be widely distributed. And so what takes place with that is once you start having the vaccine plus the third and fourth quarter, we're going to come out of what is our more normally our more warmer seasons. So you're going to come from July, August, September, where the COVID numbers naturally, as we saw in the summer, will be lower. So now you add in the fact that you were going to start seeing COVID numbers go down, vaccines increase. You're going to start getting people that have been sitting on the fence who have been worried about their safety, about moving, are finally going to go, okay, you know what, I'm ready. It's time to put properties on the market. <coughs> that's going to give us, that's going to increase our inventory. So the third and fourth quarter, I think you're going to start seeing more of a balanced marketplace and you're actually going to start hearing about where properties are going to be sitting, not like huge time, but the multiple offers, are going to start dropping off just because there's going to be a bit more inventory and buyers by then in, in this year, I think are going to take advantage of a couple things. One really low interest rates, interest rates aren't going anywhere. They're not going anywhere probably for 24 months. So we're, they're going to have good buying power with their like five years. Rates, and they're going to have a choice where they want to get into the marketplace because once they start hearing, multiple offers, I've got buyers, I'm sure all of you do too, are saying like, okay, like 
I, I need to get into something. I know I can get into something, but I want to do it now, if they can. So I think you're going to see the third and fourth quarter because of the vaccine, because of the fact that the numbers are going to be lower, people are going to feel safer. And I know, I know I have clients that have been sitting on the fence and just saying, we do want to move. And I'm sure all of you have too, where sometimes it's the seniors. Sometimes it's people that are saying, well, I'm getting ready to retire. I want to move to our place in Florida, but I don't want to do it right now. Come the end of 2021, near the third and fourth quarter, I think you're going to see people that are going to want to get their places listed, get them sold before the end of the year. Okay. So you're going to hear about what I think you're going to see is a spike in pricing. And then you're going to hear about all oh, well, the third and fourth quarter, the market has pulled back just a little bit, but overall for the year, I believe we're going to still see a good increase. Um, not to what we saw this year. Um, this year was just unbelievable with appreciation, not only in the GTA, but in pretty well all of mid to Southern Ontario. Uh, and some of the outskirt areas had a higher appreciation than anywhere around the GTA. Okay. Um, I, and the other part, part of this is that you're also going to get people that are in the city cores, either Ottawa or, or Toronto in the Ontario area, that are going to look at moving out. But because of the appreciation that's taken place in areas, let's, you know, let's use Collingwood, for example. Um, I've had people looking at going to Collingwood, but they've decided to stay where they are because the price difference has shrunk. Where two years ago when they were first looking, it was like we could sell our place in Toronto, we have all this extra equity. Well, now looking outside the GTA, there are areas where they've had such high appreciation that the Toronto, you know, let's call it the Toronto buyers moving out are not realizing as much equity as they would have a couple of years ago. So some of them are actually gonna just decide on stay where they are, um, which is then going to stop sort of that migration, you know, as moving, and that's where I say sort of third and fourth quarter of those of this year of 2021, we're gonna start hearing about where, yeah, there's still activity. There's gonna be a strong, good market, but we're gonna start getting back to be more balanced and what we're going to see in the first, but I believe first four months. Okay. Any thoughts on that right now? Any questions? What do you think about the condo market? I mean, the last three that I sold had drastically reduced prices uh, compared to what was selling in the same building, you know, six months ago. Yep. And I've got other clients that have condos and they're kind of, you know, let's hold off. We think it's going to go back up. And so it really comes down to our, you know, it's all, I, I think it's all the Airbnb guys have been dumping their properties. All the renters have been moving out and there was just this flood of listings. But is that going to turn around in Toronto and Mississauga? I don't know. Well, I'm going to answer that right now. My thoughts based on different discussions. And thank you, Eric, for bringing that up. So here's the thing that I see. Currently, right now, and for the next I'm going to say three, four months. There are opportunities to buy condos in the downtown core. In Toronto, in Ottawa, condos in the downtown have definitely pulled back. Okay. I know Steve Brene, you've been advertising one, I think, on York down in, in Ottawa area. Um, and how how is that doing compared to what it would have done last year? Uh, last year, we sold uh, within three, four days, and now we're at 60 days on market. We're the lowest price condo in the buy word market, and uh, very little activity on it. Right. And, and we're seeing the same thing in, in Toronto, like with condos. So I believe there is, for the next three, four months, there are, there's going to be opportunities for buyers to buy there as long as they can get their head around the fact that the media is going to keep saying, oh, they're going to, it's going to keep dropping, it's going to keep dropping, it's going to keep dropping. I disagree with that. I'm, I'm going to tell you why. I think that you're going, to, you're going to see the condo market in Toronto and Ottawa bounce back by the end of the year. And I, I think you're going to start seeing that happening in around June, July. 
and I'm going to just let you know why. But currently, right now, I believe over the next three, four months, there's opportunities for properties that could be bought because you're getting individuals that have either closed on a unit, don't have any tenants, and are basically saying they've made appreciation because it's still higher than it was three or four years ago when they bought pre-construction. So they still can get out, sell with taking and, and making some equity. So there will be the one ofs, two ofs, three ofs where there's going to be motivated buyers. So there is going to be opportunity there. You also have other investors that are in a position where if they sell it, great, but if they can't rent it, that's okay too, because they have their investors, they're just going to sit on them. You're going to get where there are going to be vacant units and they will sit on them. You're also going to get some people that are going to say, I'm going to do a one year rental. So I'm just going to rent it out and maybe even do short term rental. So you're going to start seeing where some of this inventory moving forward, I think is going to come off the marketplace. But right now over the next three, four months, I think there's great opportunity to buy in both of the downtowns for specific people that are looking to get out that have to sell. Okay. So there is, there's going to be opportunity there. But that opportunity, in my opinion, is going to change. It's going to change probably around June, July, August. And the reason, and get back to Eric why you're asking this, is two things are going to happen. One, the vaccine is going to be available, right? The vaccine is going to be available to the general public, and people are going to start getting vaccinated. That's going to trigger a couple of things. We're not the only country that's vaccinating people right now. Immigration is so important to Ontario, especially the downtown cores, that you're gonna start hearing about where they're going to start looking at people that they're gonna open up immigration. Probably gonna be about six months from now, but immigration is going to open up to people that have been vaccinated, possibly twice, and then they're because we're having the vaccination in the GTA area, you're going to start, the, the government is going to open up immigration. So now you're gonna get immigration opening up. Not to the full extent, but enough that there's gonna be consumer people hearing about immigration. And as soon as we get immigration, we get people moving back into Toronto, back into downtown Ottawa. Second thing that's gonna happen is you're going to have the fact that Right now, we have industries that when, when the pandemic hit and everybody moved back home to work, the efficiencies of them working from home did not fall off a lot from what was happening at the office. And the reason is, is that you had people that were scared to lose their job. So they, so they worked from home, they were getting up real early, making sure stuff was getting done, they stayed late working from home, making sure files were worked on. Well, habits have changed a little bit. And Price Waterhouse has done a survey, and they're, they've actually determined that some of the industries are now finding that their work from home policies and protocols, the efficiency rate of, um, let's call it handling a file, has dropped by 10%. So which means now, industries that are having people work from home are finding that their staff have got into habits as i said earlier but now what's happening is they're noticing that this is starting to hit their bottom line once you start having the vaccine available once immigration opens up the next factor that's going to take place is you're going to start hearing about companies calling back their staff to come back into the office reason being is that it's going to make it more efficient they're actually going to start getting people back into the work mode let's call it and not full not and not full bore but you're going to start hearing about companies already will start calling people back i have three of my clients that have already been told come september next year they will be back in the office downtown toronto so when you start hearing those things and you start getting people moving back you're also going to start then getting investors that are going to start buying up in Toronto again because you're going to also have the other factor of you have immigration 
you have people coming back into work and in September, students are gonna be back into school. Downtown, right now in Toronto and downtown Ottawa, lots of the tenants are actually university students. There are buildings that were built specifically around the universities to house these students, but there's no, haven't been any students. And lots of them are brand new buildings. Well, come in September, lots of their tenants are gonna be coming back. So that's where I believe you're gonna start hearing and seeing where the condo market is all of a sudden gonna be fast tracked a little bit, not gonna be an 18 to 24 month turnaround. Because you're gonna get the positive stimulus of the downtown cores becoming active again, where people are now being recalled back to downtown. You're going to get where people are actually moving. You're gonna hear about people moving back downtown and renting downtown because my job is now back downtown. So based on everything that I've sort of researched and people I've talked with, that's how I see the flow happening. So come September, October, you're going to, you're going to actually see where the, the market, condo market has been flushed out a little bit and starting to get balanced differently when, than what we're going to see in the next four months. Thoughts, comments? See that happening, don't see it happening? No, it makes sense. What was that, Steve? So I agree. I yeah. think it's going to be uh, fourth quarter and uh, early 21 for, uh, or sorry, early 22 and fourth quarter in Ottawa. Yeah. Most federal employees are going to be trickling back in the fourth quarter. And uh, I think Toronto is probably going to be the same because, you know, people got to get back to the office. Yeah. And it's just recently that they're all the, like these it's now that they're doing these surveys that are coming out and then companies are analyzing and going, okay, yeah, you know, we now need to plan for six months, eight months out. And so they're now notifying their staff that you are going to be getting called back. So. I'm getting the same um, feedback from my clients who are working from home. They know that they're going to be coming back. Um, and you know, the, I, I totally agree it's a time to buy in downtown Toronto. I was talking to somebody yesterday who kind of been on the fence and she was thinking about buying next year and we're trying to get her to buy now because interest rates are just ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. And the and, uh, yeah. There was a unit in her building that uh, a few months ago um, I, was gonna, I was going to offer on for a different client and it went to multiple offers and this one's been on the, on the market for 21 days priced really well and she should really go for it. Sherry lives in the building as a, as a tenant, right? So, <laughs> but, yeah. uh, and then the freeholds are still flying. And uh, I belong to a group of uh, realtors that sell exclusively. There's so many realtors out there not even putting it on MLS because they're just shopping it out to their colleagues. Yeah. Um, and, and the freehold market is going to stay strong. Like it is, it's going to stay strong. Um, and it's just the, until such time that people living in their houses currently feel comfortable enough about moving. And that means moving even outside of Canada, which they're not right now. Nobody, you know, there's nobody, very few people are selling their house to move to their permanent residence in Florida right now. Okay. That's going to change by the end of 2021. And, and because of the pandemic, the other thing that's going to start happening is you're going to get people taking early retirement who have, you know, let's call it frontline workers who have just really gone through like a crazy stressful year of going through everything. I already know four of them that I've talked with. They said they're dedicated to their job, but as soon as this starts leveling off, they're taking early retirement. And so I think people are, and not just them, but there's many people that I think are looking at what coming through this that are going to say, you know what, we had a five-year plan, now let's move that up. And so you're going to start seeing properties come available towards the end of the year, once people feel more safe, once they start having you know, better comfort about people coming through, and then you start seeing more of a, more of a balanced inventory than what we're going to see in the first four months. 
Uh, any other thoughts on condos? Any thoughts on the freehold? Um, any thoughts on what you're, what you think or have been hearing? Okay. Okay. A couple other factors that we haven't touched on that why I believe we're going to see that first half of the year be strong is the government has come out and extended incentive programs. Programs, lots of programs were supposed to end in October. They were extended to the end of the year. The government now has come out and extended programs to June. Okay? So you have, you know, such things as commercial. Hang on. Okay. So what you have is you're going to have where situations where everybody was thinking, okay, well, unemployment, once, once the incentives end the end of 2020, then we're going to have high unemployment. We're going to have a scarcity of jobs. Um, because the government's just come out and extended their programs through to June, and the reason I'm, I'm bringing this up is one of the programs they extended is for employers, the, the commercial rent subsidies. So now the actual, the actual uh, tenants, commercial tenants, don't need to go through the landlord to apply for a rent subsidy. They go right to the government. Whereas before there was a little, you had to go through your landlord to get that subsidy. Well, you don't now. The other thing that's taken place is the government extended the wage subsidies. So now employers can actually maintain employees and because they have the wage subsidy, they know they can maintain them and move forward through the next six months. Whereas, yes, there absolutely would be a position where if some companies didn't have the wage subsidies, they might be looking at downsizing. But now there's an added benefit for them through the government program to keep them employed up and through until June, okay? Um, so with, you know, with those kinds of things, and the other thing that's also just come out is companies now can also, also get another $20,000 from the government. Mm -hmm. So you have a total of 60,000 that you can apply for. Yes, you know, 40,000 of that has to be paid back, but these are all measures that are going to help take the the employment helped take the economy, move it for six months down the line. So I believe that's also going to be a factor so that you're going to have people that are going to still be employed. They're going to go through the spring market. Um, we're going to, you know, we're going to have a shortage. So you're going to see some price increases. And then once you start seeing more listings come on and some of these government subsidies and incentives end in June, July, that's where I say that the, second half of the year is going to be switching over to a balanced marketplace. It's not going to go crash. It's just going to all of a sudden start seeing more listings and, you know, people that are going to be, you know what, we're not sure now, maybe there might be some employment issues, but it's not going to crash the marketplace. Okay. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, Julie. It's interesting um, that they did, they extended the, um, the commercial rent subsidy. And I got some insight into why they did that, why they're paying it directly to the, um, the tenants versus the landlords. It's because the landlords were using this as an opportunity to move uh, existing commercial tenants out because the commercial rent, this rental market hasn't suffered. Am I, is, does anyone have any stats on that? Because I've had, I have, I know people that, rent large spaces like factory factory warehouse type spaces and their landlords said no we're not gonna we're not gonna go you, you need to go and I, I actually two of them we i put in touch with a couple politicians and they worked on a on this and then this um subsidy came out they were working on it right right so i think it's pretty interesting that the commercial rents haven't come down like the residentials have right but the other thing is, have you heard anything about any uh, further um, enhancements for like first time buyers? And 
Well, well interesting you bring that up. That's my next paragraph. <laughs> okay. Good segue. I'll let you take it from here then. <laughs> Thanks. All right. So another part that is helping and going to help the Toronto and the, you know, the, the city core is the first time home buyer incentive program that was originally brought out and it's still there had a limitation on the purchase price that you could buy in the sense it had to be um, a certain limit. And in, in the areas of Toronto, for example, in Vancouver, nobody could apply for it because the pricing was too high, for instance. And so they just announced that to entice first time buyers to buy in Toronto and Vancouver, they've now just changed the program. So the program used to be that you, you basically four times your household income is what the purchase price would be. But it only went up to $120,000 is what they would classify as being a household, top household income, which meant that you could only buy something for $505,000. In Toronto, in Vancouver, that's limited, very limited. So they've now changed the program so that it is now four and a half times the household income. So you're still, you know, they're, they're, you still have to have some pretty strong income into the, into your household to take advantage of this program. But now it's four and a half times and the ceiling on the household income is 150,000. So, which means now first time buyers can have 5% down. They get 5% from the government and they can purchase up to $722,000. So now take a look at the drop in condominium prices in Toronto, add in some of this program for some of the buyers that have good strong income, that program now works for them where it wouldn't have worked for them in Toronto before. So now there's another incentive for buyers, first time buyers to move back into Toronto back into, and it's only, and for this is only for Toronto, Vancouver, and Victoria, this new program. The old program for the other areas stays the same. Okay, is that the program you were thinking of, Julia? Yeah, okay. Are you talking like GTA or just Toronto proper? Uh, it, it's Toronto proper. It's, down, it's basically Toronto. So. That's sad. Well, Except that you can, you know, the ceiling is already set at $505,000. Yeah. All right. So uh, in, out, in areas outside of Toronto, $505,000 still can get you property. The issue was in Toronto, you couldn't even buy a condo for five fifty five hundred and five. dollars Hard to find anything in Oakville, in Oakville for that. Yeah. And it's Mississauga, Mississauga is not part of that either, right? No. Right now, it just says for Toronto. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. But I think one of, the, one of the reasons they're doing this program is they don't want to incent, intensify it so that it, it already increases issues happening in Oakville, already happening in Mississauga, already happening in places like Niagara Falls, London, where there's multiple offers. The issue, the reason I, I really believe they brought this out is to really attack the Toronto condominium and Vancouver condominium marketplace. Because with this incentive now, it does bring people that can actually use it and get that, get that advantage from the government. Where before it just didn't even make sense. They couldn't even do it. So that's another reason why I believe the condo market is that there's so many factors that are setting up for first time buyers now to be interested about moving back downtown. Investors to start looking back at buying because their tenant population come mid year is gonna start coming back. So I actually believe, and, and that's why I thought we'd have a good discussion about it, that I believe you're gonna see this is all gonna switch around within the next six months and you're gonna start hearing how the condo market in Toronto is starting to get balanced and then it's gonna move forward from there. Because when, in the next 18 months to 24 months, you're really going to hear about how vibrant Toronto is again. Can That's you just remind me exactly the, the system then? Like my daughter's in the middle of Toronto. We've been talking about this. Yeah. Um, 
uh, and the place she was looking around it was around 880 when we first looked at it which i think now is down maybe around 785 um what's the scenario in her case um if she did five percent and the government matched five percent what would be her max well the max is you have to take the household income yeah so, over right. over so, that 150. yeah so if they're if they if the total income is over 150 you only can take the 150. okay 150 four and a half times basically it's about seven hundred and twenty two thousand dollars okay okay it's getting close yeah yep. but, so, and, and you can actually, lots of the, you just go on and just do, um, you know, just, you can actually Google it and it'll give you just the first time home buyers incentive. It gives you all the parameters, but I just picked off some of the highlights for you. Okay. But each case is going to be very specific, but for instance, John, there's no way that the previous program would work for your buyers where this one could. Okay. So I thought, you know, there's another, again, another incentive on why people, why they're trying to get activity down into the Toronto area. And I think we're going to start seeing some momentum. You're going to hear the momentum, but right now, the next four months, I think that's when the opportunities are for both downtown Ottawa and downtown Toronto. Because there's no way these two cities are going to sit dormant the way they are right now, 24 months from now. And then 24 months from now, you're too late. You should have got in. That's my the pandemic, right? Yeah, and 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 it's going to be that pandemic hangover. Like, look what we saw in May, the end of May, June, when all of a sudden everybody said, "Okay, if this thing's going to be around for a while, then let's just work through it." And the market just took off, right? And we've been and we've been in that seller's marketplace because of again supply and demand. And supply is going to increase towards the end of the year and we'll continue on being steady. And, and we're going to hear about the, you know, the different reasons why Toronto and, and the downtown core are going to start coming back. So it's going to be, I think 2021 is going to be, you're going to have to work. You can't sit on, you can't sit like you're going to have like 2020. There was money to be made out there, but you need to be hustling. You need to be contacting people. You need to be, and in the first, the first three or four months, you really need to concentrate on getting listings. So whatever prospecting you're doing, whatever database you're working, um, you've got to really, my, my, my best thoughts to you would be really concentrate on getting listings, focus on getting listings because people that are going to have the listings. They're the ones four or five months after the year started are going to really have kickstarted it well. Okay. Um, Something else that, you know, totally a little bit different, but following along with the condominium market, but more pre-construction. Okay. Um, I see another change coming. Or I see a change coming in pre-construction and on how they market it, how they use realtors. And I'm already starting to hear from some of the big construction, new home construction companies about how they're handling sales because of things they introduced during COVID. Here's what I see for new home construction, more so, more so the, con the condominiums. They're going to start limiting the number of condos that they're going to offer up to realtors. The last three, four years, basically what the new home construction companies have done, they basically put out there and said, okay, we're going to go to the realtor community. We're going to get them to give us, get a list of all these people, bring them in. We're going to sell out. We're going to get to our 70% sold ratio. So we know we can get our construction financing. Well, when COVID came, some of the builders still had projects that they had to sell, but they started introducing online Zoom introduction meetings to people that have already registered online. And so where those people would normally have come into the office, they really perfected the online marketing. First of all, marketing of getting people to register. People who were before would not register for anything. Well, now that COVID and, and all the protocols online systems 
consumers are so comfortable now registering online, doing things online, that the builders are finding that they can actually control the experience of the buyers by dealing with them themselves versus having the realtors deal with them. And this is something that's just, just come to light for them where they're finding that they can, as I say, they can control the situation, they can do a better job planning it, the consumers are more, are more in tuned with it, to the point where consumers in, in some recent projects have gone onto a Zoom meeting, the builder's done the Zoom meeting, done beautiful presentation, the consumer has filled in their own uh, term sheet, sent it directly to the builder where the last few years it's been get the realtor community in, the builder does that meeting to the realtor community and then the realtor community went out and gathered all the term sheets, worksheets and sent them to the builder. So I'm gonna suggest that you're gonna start hearing about how some of the, you know, the pre-construction agents are gonna find, yeah, the builders are still gonna offer that up but they're not gonna offer up as many units as what they were doing before. And the reason I say that is builders right now have a, they're, they're in a position where their costs per square foot to build have gone through the roof. Building material, labor material, um, just all kinds of different supplies and procedures that they have, have to do has increased their cost per square foot to build drastically. So now they can go directly to the consumer, directly to the buyer. On average, the new home builders are paying 4% to the cooperating broker. So now if you can take 4% out of, let's call an average building would have 400 units, if not more, and you can get that two to 300 units of 4% back without having to rely on paying it out to realtors, and still have those sales done by your own in-house staff, that's a huge margin per unit that the builders can retain. And I've already had a couple discussions with some of the builders, and yes, they've said, oh no, we're, we're still gonna offer it up. And some of the recent building releases that took place, high, high percentage um, realtors that usually would sell 40, 50, 60 units, ended up getting less than 10. The builders themselves have actually retained a lot more of the product because the buying process, because of COVID, because of the consumers getting more comfortable, has really swung back to where the builders are retaining more control. And so I think you're gonna, you're gonna start hearing about where some of these projects that are, are gonna be coming released over the next year or two where the realtor community you're going to start hearing about some and say hey we didn't get as many allotments as we thought the builder opened it up to the consumers first before the vip realtor groups so if you are working in that space then i'm just going to suggest that just monitor what you're doing there um, because i think you need you may have to look at adding in another avenue of income because I really believe the pre-construction is going to be taken back by the builders directly. Okay, any thoughts? Anybody hearing anything different or think I'm off the wall on this? I have a question. So are you saying that those, those companies like the mill, like the Baker, the Baker group and, um, are not going to get those big inventories anymore? Baker will, but Baker actually works directly for the builder staff. So what, what the builders do is they'll go to Baker and say, okay, we want you to manage selling this particular site for us, which Baker has done for many, many years. What's happened in the last five, six, seven years is Baker then has gone to the builders and said, Part of our marketing is why instead of trying to drive the consumer to us, why don't we go directly to the realtor community because they have more control over the buying experience of their, of their buyers. And so that's what's taken place. But because of COVID, companies like 
there's companies like uh, Baker, there's Brether, there's a, that do directly work with builders. Okay. So they will still work with the builder, but the allotment that they're going to be, the builder's going to offer up to the realtor community is going to be a lot less. Okay. Because of, through all of the COVID, for instance, the Mississauga Lakeshore, Mississauga Road and Lakeshore project, okay, they had 9,000 consumers register online without agents. Okay. And that's not just the one building. They were getting, they, they also were doing shops of Don Mills. They're doing other projects. And their whole focus is like, if we now have the consumers that are comfortable with dealing directly with us in this kind of environment and are willing to do online meetings, sign worksheets online, and avoid having, and we then have control over them as a, as a company, that's the route that they're going to look. They're still going to offer up, Julie, they are still going to offer up some suites to the real estate community because they don't want to totally eliminate the realtor community, but they're going to, they're pulling back on it because in and if, and when we ever get down to a slowdown period again, then they may look at, you know, in going back to the realtor community. But I think you're going to start seeing for the last five, six years, the realtor community as the pendulum for pre-construction really swung over to the, the, the realtor side and it's now starting to come back. There'll still be some involvement, but not to the same number of units. Um, I'm, you know, we're in talks with about doing a project as well. And the builders that we're chatting with are the same thing. They're going like, people are on, people are way more comfortable to buy online. They're buying from plants. It's not like they can go see a site anyways. So you're going to start seeing where, um, where Baker, for instance, may do the consumer first and then open up what the other inventory they have to the realtor community. Okay. Any other thoughts on that? Okay. So basically I, you know, I wanted to cover off some of the things that I'm seeing, some of the things I'm hearing about, um, really, really important. As I mentioned uh, in 2021 is going to be a good year, but you've got to work it. Um, you got to concentrate on in the first part, really concentrate on getting those listings. If you can control some of the inventory earlier on in the year, that's going to really, really going to decide on how your 2021 is going to look. Okay. Um, any other thoughts, questions? But I really think that the, um, the, the low interest rates um, are going to play a very big factor in the demand over the next six to eight months. Because I cannot see that the interest rates are going to take off at all for the next two years, maybe, uh, significantly. Yes. So I think that's going to drive demand together with immigration that, you know, the, the government's talking about 400,000 immigrants per year over the next three years, you know, once the pandemic issue has been settled. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's still going to be a very vibrant market, specifically freehold um, over the next couple of years, at least. Yeah. The, uh, the last um, discussion I had in some of the information I was reading is uh, the government has come out and basically said they do not see changing interest rates until mid-late 2023. Well, we had... Um I had a couple that, that have been working for to, to, to try to get into a home. The problem they had is, is, and it wasn't qualifying or anything like that, is that for them to be able to do the high ratio mortgage, the property couldn't be above a million dollars. Correct. So, and in Oakville, it was very tough. I mean, I did eventually find it. I think we got it for 985. It was originally 1.2. 1 but they were hoarders and thank God because it, nobody wanted to walk in the house. And so 
we're able to do that. But I'm finding that everybody I'm talking to want a house, but and they want that low interest rate, and they're willing to pay the CMHC, but I got to find them a house under a million bucks, which is. And, um, yeah. You know. Now I have heard, I have heard that there are some finance companies out there that are doing four and five percent seconds. So if you're still going to be able to get a 75 or 70 percent first at two percent or two, you know, obviously because it's not insured, it's going to be a little bit higher than the 1.6 or sevens that you're seeing posted. But do look at even that short term um, private seconds because they have really dropped the rates down. And you're not talking about a big, you're not talking about a huge amount of money to be able to get it so that, you know, you're, you're, you're not going to be in that second for very long. Okay. So just another avenue to think about could be a short term fix. Yeah. They, in the beginning, they may have to pay a little bit more as an average, but still, you know, with the way the rates are now, they're, they're basically, you take a look a year ago, year and a half ago, even when we had three and a three and a half percent interest rates, they've dropped a, basically a third, right? So even if you have to look at a second, average it out, they still may be in a position that they could buy higher. Anybody else have any questions, thoughts? No? Okay. Well, those are my insights that uh, just from, you know, and I appreciate everybody else's thoughts and uh, glad everybody could participate on this. And uh, by, you know, we're just going to keep working through this. Yeah. Has there been any change in the CMHC rate? Um, you know, there used to be a scale at 5%, 10%, 15 and 20. Has that changed at all? They, they do have that. They've up, they have changed it. So yeah, you just got to go in and depending on the, the parameters but but nothing new no. nothing no, new nothing no. No, nothing in the last 60 90 days for sure okay. all right that's what i was wondering yeah. yeah okay anything else any other questions thoughts hey, if not hey i appreciate it some of this stuff as i say this is just sort of my insight but i wanted to share it with you based on all the different people that i've been chatting with and reading about and seminars and things um i think again it's going to be a great 2021, but you got to work. So I do really think right now you guys got to be, if you haven't already done so pull out your, uh, getting, you know, get your goal sets going, get your plan organized and don't wait to do that in early 2021. Ones that are really going to be successful are the agents that come out flying. Okay. So I really encourage you to take some time, set it up, get your plan in order and kickstart it. And if you, want to talk about it or you want to do a one-on-one -on -one goal setting, reach out to me. Okay. Everybody stay safe. Thanks for participating and we'll chat soon. Thanks, Scott. See you guys. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.